It all started in a night when suddenly lighting starts to strike some buildings. Monster starts to come from the buildings that got hit by the lighting and starts to kill the humans. This phenomena occur all around the world at the same time. Every building that was struck by the unexplained lightning transformed into a den of monsters that attacked people. The transformed buildings became known as dungeons. To collect more information about the current situation, each country dispatched armed forces. But conventional weapons weren't effective against monsters, and even the militaries were forced to withdraw. Humanity is on the verse of destruction. However, appearing in front of the humanity that had lost all hope was the Awakeners, who could make use of items called gate cards. It's hypothesized that these gate cards were developed in secret after the dungeon phenomenon appeared. The Awakeners who held the ability to use the cards that suited them appeared one after another. So humanity obtained a method to counter the dungeons and the Awakeners became an existence everyone admired. Soon, companies that scouted, awakeners and whose business was clearing dungeons appeared. In this world destroyed by dungeonization, the awakeners unknow rewards transformed into an elite occupation that gained vast rewards. Our MC's name is Okada Hikaru, who is an awakener who has been in a company for three years, aiming to get a job in clearing dungeons. His father was killed by a monster that appeared in a dungeon. He was burdened with taking care of his sick mother and his little sister. As he was at a loss, so he bet everything into taking an aptitude exam for Awakeners. As he did the test, he passed it, but he has the lowest of the lowest rank. He managed to become an Awakener with the lowest score in history. Obviously, no company would ever hire an Awakener with such a low rank. So doing countless part-time jobs, he could barely manage to fend for himself day after day, but one day his luck turns good. Clear Water Inc., a large corporation that cleared dungeons one after another, was recruiting Awakeners, Okita Hikaru. Applied there and luckily, he got recruited as a Awakener. Final, its first day of work as an Awakener has come. Okita Hikaru is very excited, but at the same time, his feels a little bit uneasy thinking about the unexpected dangers. In the first, the Okita Hikaru and some higher level Awakener were assigned to raid a C-rank dungeon. The dungeon is in a building which was, previously, a pharmaceutical company. Okita Hikaru and his team has come to the ninth level of the dungeon. While they were searching for any monster activity, suddenly some goblins, which are F-rank monster, ambushed the low-ranked members like Okita Hikaru and starts to kill them. After that, a higher-level Awakener named Noguchi killed all of the goblins and starts to shout at the low-ranked members. That why are they not stooping the monster with their life on the line as they are paid to do so? At that time, the team leader stopped him and asked for a status report. In the meanwhile, Okita Hikaru pulls the low-ranked member from the ground. By seeing the injured members, Okita Hikaru tells the leader that they should retreat and get medical treatments, or else the injured ones will be dead. The leader and the other higher-level awakener told that it's over for them and also told to leave them. But Okita Hikaru was not going to leave them injured, so as he was going to use a healing gate card, the leader stops him saying that not to waste his mana. He also says that using cards without being ordered to do so is a breach of public service regulations. He will be punished for this. Okita Hikaru understands it, and he leaves them with a sorry face. The team assembled to conquer the dungeon this time is made up of an elite Awakener team centered around a rank members and low-ranked Awakeners, including him who don't have much power as Awakeners, they were just pieces for elite awakeners to use and throw away as Okita Hikaru was walking. He requests Noguchi to give the low-ranked members a gun. Noguchi gets angry and grabs his collar and said that he should not be cocky and use the equipments he was given. Other than powerful gate cards, Elite Awakeners are also equipped with cutting-edge firearms developed to use against monsters. However, 
to use the precious mana stones obtained from monsters in the bullets. Low rank. Awakeners didn't get to use it. They can only get self-defense items that are barely better than some shabby equipments. Furthermore, compared to the elites who have expensive custom, made suits stitched with special threads for defense, the low-rank members wear members pre-made suits that isn't sufficient to protect their lives in a dungeon. As the one with the lowest rank in history, Okita Hikaru get treated the worst among the low-ranked members. He is useless in battle, and they won't let him contribute, so he is in charge of miscellaneous duties like being a porter. After some walking, they all have reached the tenth floor. Okita Hikaru starts to check the radar for monsters. He saw that in group of goblins were coming in front of them, so he tells all the members about this. After hearing and seeing the goblins coming from the front, the leader told the other to take their positions and ordered them to kill the front goblins with their guns and to save the gate cards for later. The members hear their leader's words and acts accordingly. They started to kill all the goblins that were rushing towards them with guns, but one goblins get past them and head towards Okita. Hikaru, the girl told Okita. Hikaru to be careful. He takes a stun rod, and as the goblin comes in front to him, he swings the rod, but the goblin dodged it and throw him on the ground with a single slap. As the goblin is going to kill him, the lady shots the goblin and saves his life. The lady insults Okita Hikaru that a mere goblin has made him in this state. He is good for nothing, and how lucky of him that he gets paid just working like this. Okita Hikaru gets angry and could do nothing. He thinks that could have done much better if only he had a stronger weapon or if only his gate card had a higher rank. In the meanwhile, the rest of the elite members has finished executing the monsters. This time, they have got some mana stone. Once anybody defeat a monster, they can obtain the crystallized form of the mana they hold, known as mana stones. If anybody seal a rare mana stone dropped from powerful monsters, he can activate its inherent skill. The mana from small mana stones dropped from low-rank monsters like goblins cannot be used for cards or weapons, but to use powerful skills, one requires a lot of mana. That's why mana stones are indispensable to all Awakeners, high and low rank included. And mana stones belong to the Awakener who defeated the monsters. In other words, an Awakener who can't land the finishing blow on a monster has no chance of obtaining mana stones. As the team finished their hunting, the leader told Okita to tell them the way to the upper floor. Okita watches the raider and told them that the next floor is 40 meters ahead of them. He also see tells them that the radar also shows three monsters coming towards them. Among the three monsters, one is a C-rank Werlion and the other two were D-rank Guard Lion. The Werlion roars at them, which makes them a little tense. The leader told Okita to tell the details of the Werlion. Okita watches the device and tells that it is a magic beast with no special skills and the firearms is ineffective against it. By hearing this, the leader instructs the members that, as the guard lions has good coordination, so they will be bothersome. So he orders the members to first kill them, and then move on, the were lion. The leader then orders the shield group to maintain their positions and to protect the A-rank awakeners from the guard lions attacks, Noguchi and the lady. Also said that again, they will be meat, shield for the A-rank awakeners. They also told them, it's fine if they die, and also threatens them, that they will kill them, is they break the shield formation. That's, right? This is the work of the low-ranked members, to be a meat shield that protects the elite awakeners from monsters attack. In the meantime, the Warlion team has come closer to the awakeners. Everybody also gets into their positions, as the Warlion roars, the two guard lions rush to attack the Awakeners. The leader order the shield team to take their gate cards and lure them as close as possible. As the guard lions are coming closer, the low-ranked members gets a bit scared, and as the lions are about to land there, attack, the low-ranked members activated their gate card, and a D-ranked defensive barrier appears, which can defend against physical damage. The lions attacked the barrier, but couldn't break it. 
the low-ranked members that were maintaining the barrier cannot handle it for much longer. So they told the elite members to attack the guard lions quickly. By hearing this, Noguchi said that they are trash to get scared from such a puny attack. Noguchi then draw his gate card, name Inferno Swordsman, which is an A-rank card with a fire attribute. As he activated the card, a huge flame, monkey with a flame sword in his hand appears and attacks one guard lion and burns it to death. The other guard lion was attacking the barrier continuously, but it was soon killed by the lady as she draws her Blade of Tempest gate card, which is also an A-rank card with a wind attribute. A sea monster arrives with a green sword in its hand, which he used to kill the guard lion. By seeing this, the low-ranked members, along with Okita, starts to praise the two A-rank members. In the meantime, the Wur Lion attacks with its great axe and from its one swing the barrier and the ground shatters. The low-ranked members also fell on the ground from its impact and also gets cuts in their body. By seeing this, our MC, Okita rushed in front of them and take his stun rod on his hand. As he was going to lure the were lion away from the injured members, Noguchi comes and kicks on Okita's face and beats him into pile by saying that why he comes rushing forward, his job is to heal the members, not to save them from monsters. Noguchi also. Furthers insults him that as the weakest of the F rank, he should not try be the hero, as only the A rank awakeners will kill the monsters. By saying this, he again draws his gate card and attacks the Wur Lion, but this time his attack did not do much damage to the Wur Lion. The leader then shouts at the low ranked members why they are slacking off and orders them to quickly activate the barrier. He also orders Okita to heal all the injured members. By hearing the leader's order, the members along with Okita starts to work accordingly. Okita uses his F-rank healing gate card and heals the injured members. The healed members along with the others activated the defensive barrier, but the barrier was no use as it breaks from taking a single hit from the Wurel Lion. The lady then uses her wind blade gate card and force the Wurel Lion to fall back. The leader draws his card and orders the low-ranked members not to stop expanding the defensive barrier. The members hold on the barrier, and on the other hand, the lady continues her attack with her wind blade gate, card, and Noguchi also does the same, attacking the Were Lion with his flame sword. Okita also does his work properly. He heals all the members that gets injured. The two elite members, Chain, attack weakens. The monster very much. Then the two of them told the leader to unleash his skill and finish it. The leader activates his A-rank gate card, Name Spear of Water, which is a water-type skill, as he activates it a water man with a three-headed spear in its hand appears. It then attacks the were lion with its spear and kills it, piercing its heart. The were lion disappears and leaves a rare mana stone, as the mana stone only belongs to the Awakener that deals the final blow, so the chance of a low-ranked Awakener getting a mana stone is negligible. Because of this system, many low-ranked Awakener leave this job on a regular basis. The leader then tells Okita that he see a new light in him as he covers the low-ranked members from the Werlian. The leader then takes an A-rank gate card that they prepared in expectation of this dungeon's boss and gives it to Okita. Okita and the other get shocked from this action of the leader. As Noguchi was trying to stop the leader, the leader make him shuts his mouth by saying that Okita risk his life to save the members, will he be able to perform this action? The leader then tells Okita that this is a powerful card that must be used only to confine giant monsters. He also warns him that not to use this card until he orders him. He also says that to use this card, one has to recite a specific code that is release, seal, unlock. The leaders then takes the potion card and give him this A-rank card in exchange. It's a one-use card that an Awakener can only have one of. Also, this is the only card that can defeat the dungeon boss. The leader then walks ahead by saying that he has high expectation from him. 
Okita gets really happy as this is the one and only chance of him getting out of this weak low rank. Then all of them head towards the entrance of 10th floor. As they enters it, the device rings a caution alert as there is a large monster presence. They look forward and saw a huge dragon, which is likely the boss of the dungeon. By seeing the gaint monster, which is at least five times bigger than the were-lion, everybody was stunned. Everybody was very afraid by seeing this monstrous thing. But the captain spoke up and helps the others to regain their senses. He told the other to continue the battle and advise them not to get in the attack rang of the beast. He asked Okita for the details of the monster. As Okita looked at the device, he couldn't found the details of the monster. Then he starts to find the closest monster attribute that matches with the dungeon boss. He gets that the dungeon boss matches with a basilisk monster. He tells this to the leader. By hearing this, the leader said as basilisk is a poison type monster. So this boss will also have something similar. He told the members to be careful about its poison and also said that it has a thu outer skin which is likely to deflect most of their attacks. He then orders the A-rankers to attack simultaneously and told the shield team to activate a barrier that is three times stronger than before. He also tells Okita to stand back with the trump card in his hand. The monster takes the attack stand and run towards them. The shield team activated the barrier, but it was of no use and it breaks with a simple slash from the monster. By this time, the two elite members along with the leader activated their skill cards. The three skill land on the dungeon boss successful, but the boss was unscathed from the triple attack. The boss then attacks with its tail and make the shield team members fly away. By seeing this, Noguchi again attacks the monster with his flame sword skill and was able to make the monster fall back. The leader then orders all the members to withdraw and fall back of the floor entrance. As everybody fall back, successful, the leader told that this is the time that they need Okita's power. The leader asked Okita if he is ready to use the card, as to this card he has to get closer to the monster alone. Okita says that he is ready. By hearing this, the leader smiles and said that he was the one who chose him, and now he thinks that he did the correct thing choosing him. He also said to Okita that he counts on him. The leader then told the others that as Okita approaches the monster, the elite members will support him. As the planning was done, Okita rushes towards the monster and the members starts their attack. While the two elite members were attacking the monster, with their skill card, the shield team members also didn't sit back and attacks the monster with the mana. Guns, Okita dodged from all the monster's attacks and was able to get closer. He then activated the gate card the card starts to glow and starts to radiate red light. Okita thinks that the card is working, but suddenly the ground under his feet breaks and he starts to fall. As he falls, he hits the ground. Lucky, he didn't get any major injury. He gets up and looks at the surroundings. He sees that all the other teammates A says why. He was the only one that fall while everyone is above. He also begs the leader to tell him that's going on. By hearing this, the elite members along with the leader starts to laugh by saying that he actually fell for that. Okita was so confused he was not understanding any things. The leader speaks up and said that the card he gave him was not a attack type. Rather, it is a trap card. Once it is activated, the ground under the feet collapses trapping the user and the opponent. The leader also says that this is the only SRT strategy to kill the boss monster as it has a high defense. They cannot defeat it while attacking its outer skin. So the only possible way is to attack the monster mouth when the monster opens its mouth to eat its peery. He also says that he was the one to delete all the information of the dungeon boss from the tablet so that Okita could not get any idea about the boss and he will be the meal of the monster. In the meantime, the monster gets up from the rumble and noticed Okita and slashes his back with its big nails. Okita starts to bleed from the wounds he received. The monster then opens its mouth wider to eat. Okita, but as Okita runs, the monster lost interest in him and looks at the other members. 
By seeing this, Noguchi activated his flame sword skill and attacks the monster. The flames from the skill also affects Okita, so he requests him to stop his skill. The flame was so intense that the surrounding air gets hotter. As the skill gets over, Noguchi is going to, again, activate the skill, but the leader stops him as the monster was about to launch its attack. By seeing that the monster is about to attack, Okita gets scared and takes his coat and lay on the ground by covering himself with the coat. As the monster launched the attack, the attack didn't get to Okita, rather it gets upwards because of the hot air. It's rise up and was about to affect the other members, so they goes away by seeing this. By seeing this, Okita gets behind a rock and thinks as the 10th floor breaks, so they are currently at the 9th floor. He remembers that there is a passage in the ninth floor, so he starts to look for it. After a while of searching, he founds the passage and quickly runs towards it. The monster noticed him and start to walk towards him. He successful, gets inside the passage, but was very exhausted from the injuries he got. As he walks inside the passage, he comes to know that there is a dead end. He lost all of his hope, but a miracle happens to him when he place his left hand on the wall and a gap opens, and he saw a bright light coming from the other end of the gap, but he didn't know how to open it. In the meantime, the monster breaks the roof of the passage and get its head inside. Okita get hits from the falling selling and fells on the ground as the monster was about to launch its breath. Okita spread out his hand for the gap and shouts to open, and lucky the gap opens with the immense bright light. As Okita sees the bright light, he gets transferred into a different place, and as he reached the place, he faints away. After some times, he gets up and was amazed to see that he is still alive. He then looks around and found himself in an unfamiliar white room. He looks around and was shocked to see that the entrance and the dungeon boss is also gone. He then looks on the floor and sees the same pattern on the floor that is on the gate card. At the same time, he also feels that the entire room is filled with dense mana. He sees a bright light that is coming from the center of the room, so he becomes curious and starts to walk towards the light. As he reached there, he saw an altar, and as he placed his hand on the altar, a voice spoke up, but it was in a different language which was unknown for him. After some adjustment, the voice starts to spoke up in Japanese and asked if, if he desire power. By hearing this, Okita remembers about the betrayal he gets from the elite member and gets angry and told the voice to give him all the power it has. After the altar confirms the Okita's word, a blue light surrounds his body and starts to scan his body. As soon as the scan is completed, the wounds in Okita's body starts to heal and his eyesight also gets enhanced. The altar then says that. Now Okita's card will be exchanged with a higher card, but Okita didn't have any card in his card holder. A Awakener can only have one gate card, but as Okita exchange his potion card with a one-time use tarp card, so he currently has no card. Okita feels hopeless as he has no card to exchange, but this time his luck shines and a bug happens in the altar and the blue color altar starts to turn dark purple and starts to shot purple lightning. As time goes, the purple lightning gets bigger by seeing this. Okita starts to run, but a lightning hits him and he falls on the ground. After a while, as he gets up, he sees that all the lightning is gone, but the altar has turned into a dark purple color. He goes towards the altar and asked it, where is the card that it will give him? As Okita says this, he feels a shake from his card holder. He then draw a card from his card holder. It was a gate card that he has never seen before, as he was looking the card closely. Suddenly lots of cards come rushing out from his card holder and stops in front of him floating in the air. He was shocked to see that. But then he thinks that this all happens because of the bug. He thinks maybe all of the cards are trash. So he pull his hand towards one card and touches it. As soon as he touched the card, a purple lightning hits him and he gets a huge headache. In his head, he gets all the information of all the cards. After he gets all the information, he take a gate card which has a twin dragon picture drawn on it. He then shouts the card name, Jet Black Twin Headed, 
Dragon Schwartz Doppeldrash and activate it. As he activated the card, a huge, twin-headed black appears. By seeing the dragon, he feels that the rank of this card is much higher than an A-rank card. The dragon then launched its attack, which wad so power that it breaks the ground. By seeing this attack, he gets a bit tense and thinks that if all the cards are this powerful. So he picks some cards, such as Magic Bullet Master, Barret Benoza, Silver Archer, Weissaber Born Schutze, Vortex of Raging Distorted Earth, and activated all of them together. He was amazed to see the destructive power of these cards. So he thinks that whether it is the dungeon boss or the elite members that throw him away, he can defeat all of them. After that, he again tries some of the cards. That catches his eye, all the cards he used have power surpassing of an A-rank card. He was eager to use all the cards, but by seeing the destroyed room he gives. He then begins to think, who can he hold so many skill card whereas one person can only hold one card? He then remembers that there are also S-rank Awakeners, who surpasses the A-ranks also exit, and he heard some rumors that S-rank cards are completely different, but his case can't be description this way as his eyesight and his whole body is also enhanced. As he didn't find any clue, he stops thinking and decides to go out and defeat the dungeon boss. He gets all the cards onto his card holder, but he cannot find an exit. He remembers the way he gets in, he then place his hand on the wall and recite open gate in his mind, and he gets out of the white room. As he get back to the dungeon, he looks for the boss, but he couldn't find it. He then looks at the wall, he sees his blood on the wall, but there was no gap. He thinks that he has awake from a long dream. So to clear it, he draws a card from the card holder, and fortunately, it was not a dream. And the twin-headed dragon card comes out of the card holder. By see the card in his hand, he gets ensure that all the things happened to him was real. So he starts to walk out of the passage. While walking, he heard battle noises and quickly gets there and see that the dungeon is there and the elite members are also present. They were fighting the boss. By seeing this, Okita gets angry. He activated the twin-headed dragon card and the twin-headed dragon appears in front of the dungeon boss. The party members get shocked by seeing a dragon appeared out of nowhere. In comparison to the dungeon boss, the dragon is a bit larger. Okita then orders the left head to bite the dungeon boss neck. The dragon does according to Okita's order. The leader and Noguchi get scared to see what is happening. Okita then gives his second order, he told the right head to launch its attack and burn the boss to ash. As the twin-headed dragon launched its attack the dungeon, boss also launched its attack. The two attacks collided, and the dungeon boss attack gets it. Direction changed and it goes towards the party members. The attack lands on the high ground where the party members were standing and the ground breaks, from which the leader, Noguchi, and the other party members starts to fall. As the ground falls, the whole place gets covered with dust smoke. In the meantime, Okita gets down and stands beside the twin-headed dragon. Because of the smoke, he cannot see anything, so he thinks that the dungeon boss is unharmed. So Okita is going to activate his another gate card, but as the smoke gets a bit clear, he was shocked to see that the whole neck of the dungeon boss is missing. He was so shocked to see that twin-headed dragon defeated the dungeon boss with just one attack. He praises the dragon for this. Wily he was praising the twin headed dragon, suddenly a voice spoke up which scared him. He also see that a panel has appeared in front of his face. The voice then said that the dungeon subjugation is completed. Okita recognized the voice. It is the same voice he heard inside the altar. The voice also says that the rank of jet black twin headed dragon increased and a title. Master of Dragons is bestowed upon Okita. Okita was surprised to hear that the rank of a gate card is not fixed and that a strong card as the jet black twin-headed dragon can get more stronger. He then takes a look at the panel which he has never seen before. As he look forward he can see all the items info through the panel. As he was seeing the item among them he saw the dungeon boss Mana Stone so he gets closer to it and takes the mana stone on his hand, and by seeing the panel info, he gets that this is a rare mana stone. 
He was so happy to touch a rare mana stone for the first time. He then thanks the twin-headed dragon for defeating the dungeon boss and call it back to its card. As he looks forward at the rumble, he can see the status of the party members that fall along. With the ground, so he go towards them and found that all of them are unconscious. He then looks at the leader's info and see that his name is Tyra Shigeru. He was also fallen unconscious. But after a while, the leader opens his eyes and is shocked to see Okita. He then asked Okita about the dungeon boss and from where did the twin-headed dragon come from? Okita replies that he killed the dungeon. This reply gives a big shock to the leader. Okita then asked him why the hell did he deceived him, and he also gives death glare at him. The leader was sensing immense aura coming from Okita, so he starts to convince Okita that he was trying to deceive him. Rather, it was needed to make someone as a bait to kill the monster. He also says that he want to give Okita a change to get a rare mana, but the words to the leader cannot convince Okita. The leader was afraid if Okita gets out and reports the company that he has been deceived by the leader, the company will arrest him. So the leader makes a plan to make a surprise attack and kill him. He then asked Okita if he get a rare card and also requests him to show it to him. Okita then takes a card and shows him. He then quickly snatches the card from Okita's hand and throw it away and activates his Spear of Water gate card. But Okita quickly draw out his jet black twin headed dragon gate card. By seeing this, the leader gets shocked as how he is able to have another gate card. Now the spearman and the twin-headed dragon comes face to face. Okita orders the dragon to tear the enemy and the dragon tears the spearman in just a few seconds. By seeing this, the leader falls on the ground and is very scared to see the twin-headed dragon beside Okita. Okita then spokes up and said that he will not take his puny life and also says he will quite the company and the incident that occurs here. He will not report this also. He then starts to walk away by saying, thanks for taking care of him. As Okita was going away, the leader gets angry and he takes the gun and shots it at Okita. After the leader shoot, the bullet didn't get to Okita as the twin-headed dragon deflected the bullet with its wing. By seeing the dragon blocking the bullet, the leader gets nervous and starts to shoot continuously. Okita then turned towards the leader as the dragon was blocking all the bullets. As he looks on the leader, he can see the status of the leader and also can see the next move of the leader. From this ability, he was able to know the plan of the leader and acts accordingly to save himself and make the leader dance in his own plums. He then order the dragon to attack and the dragon does so, the attack lander on his hand and the handgun has fallen away from his hand. The dragon then launched its second attack by seeing this. The leader steps backwards and stand in front of the wall. The attack did harm him as the attack landed one centimeter above his shoulder. The dragon then attacks continuously, but none of the attacks hitted him. The leader kneels down and place his hands over his hand and shouts for helping him. Okita then looks at the status of the leader and see that he has lost his will to fight. After seeing this, Okita told the dragon to stop, and he tells the leader that now his existence doesn't matter to him. He also warns him that from today onwards, if he dare to direct any killing intent towards him, he will kill him immediately. From this display of Okita's power, the leader gets so scared that he pees in his pants. As Okita sees this, he puts a smile in his face and told the leader not to be so frightened, and as an apology gift, Okita gives him the rare mana stone that he got from the dungeon boss. Okita then tells the leader to submit a Dungeon clearance report to the company, and after that he takes his leave from the Dungeon to start a brand new life of his. Then we can see on the next day in the Clearwater Heed quarters, as Okita declares to everyone that he is quitting the company. Some girls comes to him and try to convince him not to quite. These two girls are Okita's senior. They works in the general affairs department. Their work is to support the Awakeners. As Okita looks at their status, he gets that both of them are C-rank Awakeners, which is much higher than his rank. But Okita was so confused as these high-ranked Awakeners are being so nice to him. 
The girls asked him what he will do after he quit this company. Okita replied that he will be raiding dungeons sololy. As the surrounded employees hear this, they makes fun of him and says that, what nice joke it is, that a F-rank awakener can solo a dungeon. Then a boy named Nakamura-kun and an old man named Terui-san comes to him and also try to convince him. Okita now can see everybody's status, and from his, he can easily say whether a person is truly concerned about him or not. He then looks at the status of Terui-san and Nakamura-kun and founds that they both are F-rank and are truly concerned about him. He now feels a little bit bad for these guys. As he was talking to them, he feels a dominating pressure from his back, and as he turns his head, he saw the director Serizawa. As he tried to look at his status, a red panel appears and said, that it is unidentified. After seeing this, Okita thinks that the rank of the director would he above an A rank. Okita, who is the lowest F-rank awakener, got his luck Schnee in his first dungeon raid and he gained many abilities. The first one is the ability to limitlessly use the gate carbs that Ankeners can originally only use. One at a time, this ability is alone, holds the power to make an awakener invincible. The second thing that he got is that the numerous extremely powerful rare cards he obtained that can pulverize a dungeon boss with a single attack. And finally, the eyes that allow him to see through his opponent's skills, abilities, and actions. This is the ability that helps Okita survive from the heinous plan of the party leader, although he should have obtained a power that would greatly surpass those a rank awakeners. But even with this powers, he cannot see the status of the director. This means the director Serizawa holds even more powers that his ability can handle. The director comes and stops the girls and starts to talk with Okita. At first, he greets. Okita and introduces himself and said that when though Okita is affiliated with his team, they didn't have a direct conversation. Director Serizawa is the most capable person in the Clearwater Company. He also best fit as a leader as he has, raises up the performance of many Awakeners team. There are countless A-rank Awakeners like Tyra and the others who are his subordinates. He doesn't usually personally appear on site or manage Awakeners. He also got some contacts in government and has a good relationship with the Prime Minister. And there are also rumor about him that his ability is much stronger than his communication skills. The director then speaks up and said that he didn't come to stop him, but he rather wants to hear the reason of him quitting this company, which is the best in this line. Okita then says that, as a low-ranked awakener in this clear water company, he has to deal with a lots of indignation. By hearing this, all the girls get scared, and the director replied that he didn't think he had a subordinate who could express their opinions so boldly, and also said that he wish he knew this before he quit. The director then says sorry to Okita for interrupting him and says that he hopes that he achieves success through his efforts after leaving this company. The director also gives him a little bit warning, that is, if he gets in the way of the company, he will completely crash him. After that, the director takes his leave. Noguchi, the lady and Taira, was also present there. Noguchi tells that what's the fuss as Okita is quitting, which is a mere F-rank awakener. Noguchi then asked Taira who he defeated the dungeon boss while all of them were unconscious. By hearing this, Taira gets angry and starts to leave quickly. After that, Okita gets out of the building and he was thinking that where he would get a free dungeon, which he can clear alone. He then looks front and see an old man asking other to help him, but no, was hearing him. Then, as he sees Okita getting out of the building, he rushes towards Okita and asked him if he is an awakener. Okita says yes. Getting the reply from Okita, the old man holds Okita's hand and begs him to clear his dungeon. After hearing this request of the old man Okita, as takes the old man to a cafe to hear more about his situation in details. As they sit in the cafe, the old man introduces himself. His name 
is Matsuda. Okita also looks at the old man's status and see that this man is not an awakener and hence he has no skills. Old man Matsuda then says to Okita that his building has been dungeonized and he wants Okita to clear it for him. After hearing this, Okita asked why he is not hiring any other high-ranked awakener from a reputable company. Old man. Matsuda replied that he does not have enough money to pay a large company like the Clearwater. Okita then questioned that didn't free awakeners dispatched by the government come to deal with it. The old man replied that those guys are no good, they only want to extort money and have no intention of actually clearing the dungeon, and this is already the his fourth time he have been swindled out of millions of yen just with the retainer fees. Although large corporations use their full power to clear high reward buildings like skyscrapers and power plants, but places like community buildings and small apartments are lower on the priority list for clearing, meaning the paid rewards are also lower. Therefore, large corporations don't dispatch awakeners there. So because of that, people like Matsuda-san have no choice but to rely on awakeners of inferior quality. Okita then looks at the depressed face of old Matsuda and have many thoughts in his heart. Old man, Matsuda then says to Okita that he knows that it will be a trouble for Okita to dive into a dungeon without informing his company, but he has no choice to directly ask an awakener from a large corporations like Clearwater. By hearing the word of old Matsuda Okita says that he has recently quit the Clearwater company and he is also looking for a dungeon to test his skills in as a free awakener. He also says that he didn't need a retainer fee, and he requests old Matsuda to give him the dungeon, old man. Matsuda gets so surprised by Okita's word that he stood up from the sofa. Okita the rises his hand to the old man and introduces himself. And by shaking the hand of old Matsuda, he told him to show the way of the dungeon. After that, they went to the Matsuda-san's building. As they arrive there, they see Saki, who is the granddaughter of Matsuda-san. She was arguing with two awakeners who has come to take the retainer fees. Saki knows that these awakeners are fruads who will take the retainer fees and run away. So she takes out her phone and starts to record so that she can expose them. As the awakeners see Saki recording them, they quickly hide their face and run away. As Okita and Matsuda-san were seeing this, they run toward Saki and asked her if she is okay. Saki said that she is completed fine, and as she see Okita standing beside his grandfather, she asked her grandfather about this man. The grandfather then introduces Okita to her and said that Okita will be clearing this dungeon and he will also not take any retainer fees. By hearing this, Saki stares at Okita and asked him to show her his Awakener registration card. Okita then shows her his card. By seeing Okita's card, Saki gets shocked as she see the rank of Okita, which is F. She tells her grandfather that Okita eyed the lowest-ranked Awakener and asked him if it will be all right to let him raid the dungeon. Okita hears her words and tells her that he is also looking for a dungeon to test out his skill, and he ensures her that he will not be a burden to old Matsuda. By hearing Okita's words, Saki gets impressed and said that as her grandfather says, it's fine, so she didn't mind it anymore. She then hand over Okita a tablet, which has information about the dungeon. Okita takes it and says to leave the dungeon to him as he will be returning shortly. After saying this, he gets inside the dungeon. As he enters the dungeon, the blue panel any appears. He then looks the surrounding and was amazed to see that how big it is. As he is walking in the dungeon, the blue panel again appears and said that there are monsters around him. Okita was impressed to see this function of the system, which can automatically detect monsters. Okita then finds that its abilities didn't stop here. It also shows Okita the location of all the monsters in the first floor, and also gives him a detail of all the numbers of each type of monsters. By seeing this, Okita gets excited and bring out all the cards from his card holder. He then chooses the Vortex of Raging Flames card, as he activates it, a Gaint Skeleton. With flames all over it appears, Okita then orders the Gaint Skeleton to burn all the goblins to ashes. 
The Gaint skeleton attacks and a tornado of flame appears, which burns all the goblins. The confirmation of the death message appears. Other message also appears, which says that the rank of the Vortex of Flame card increases and Okita has also got a new title Master of Flames. After that, Okita fells a bit difficulty in breathing. At that time, an alert message appears, which says that there is a very low concentration of oxygen in the Dungjion, and it will make a hindrance in survival. Okita was running low on oxygen as the flame attack of the Gaint Skeleton takes up all the oxygen. He starts to sweet and was about to lose his consciousness. He then takes all his cards out of the card holder and starts to look for a card that can provide some help in his dire situation. Okita then sees a card named Sag of Purity. He was confused that will this card be able to save him, but he didn't hesitate to use it as he was in a life or death situation. He draws the card, and in blue angle with a rainbow crystal crown around its head appears. The angle blow the air with its mouth. At that time, Okita's hands and feet starts to turn numb, but after a while, a message appears, which says that the air in the floor has turned back into normal. By seeing this, Okita sits on the ground to take lungs full of air and feels alive again. He then looks at the angle and thinks that if this was the wrong card, he could have lost his life. He also gets amazed that all the cards he have is way too powerful. He also thinks that from now on, he should not use the cards reckless as he used in the white room. In the white room, he could use unlimited cards, as it didn't harm him, and he also has unlimited access of mana. But in reality, he does not have unlimited mana. And a few moments earlier, he was already getting himself killed by one of his cards. He then gets up and starts to collect all the mana stones that drops from killing the goblin. As he collects the mana stones from the ground, his mana also gets recovered. On the outside of the dungeon, old man Matsuda-san and his granddaughter is waiting outside. Saki tells his grandfather that they should be going home as she has heard that clearing a dungeon can take up to a few days, but Matsuda-san didn't want to go. He will be waiting for Okita's return, who is risking his life for him to clear the dungeon. Saki understands her grandfather's feels, and she also decides to stay with him. Inside the dungeon, Okita has now entered the next floor. As he enters, he can feel that there are more monsters here than the pervious floor. He then draws his Magic Missile Master card, and a huge gray color monster with a staff in his hand appears. The huge gray monsters starts to fire magic missiles and kills the goblins. After a while, a message appears, which says that he is running low on mana and 10% of his mana is been consumed per second. By seeing, this Okita tells the monster to wait, but it was firing continuously. After a few seconds, another message pops up which says that 50% of his remaining mana has been consumed. By seeing this Okita shout out loud to stop and the huge gray monster return to its card. After that, thousands of message appears that all the goblins and monsters in this floor has been killed. The rank of the Magic Missile Master card also increases and Okita also, he, a new title named Shooter of Magic Missile. Okita is sitting on the ground and thinks that he is lucky as all the monsters gets defeated before he ran out of mana. He also thinks that his skills aren't enough to use this cards as using only three cards depleted his mana. He then starts to recover his mans by taking up the dropped mana stones. As he was walking, he was thinking that if he did not use a card that consumes less mana, he would be able to reach to the Dungon boss. He then looks for a short-ranged card like a warrior or a swordsman, but he didn't like to use as this type of cards by thinking of Noguchi and that lady. But now he has no other choice. He searches his coat pocket and found a card named Cerulean Swordsman. As he draws the card, a swordsman with a katana in his hand appears. The swordsman then demonstrate Okita some of his skills. By seeing the skills, Okita gets happy as this is the card that he was looking for. He then moves to a further floor as he gets in the floor. He saw huge numbers of goblins are waiting for him. He then draws the Cerulean Swordsman card and the swordsman appears. 
From the appearance of the swordsmen, the monsters get scared. Okita then orders the swordsmen to slash all of the monsters. The swordsman then rushes towards the goblins and takes a stand in front of the goblins. He then unstealth his katana and all the goblins get sliced away. Okita founds it very amazing as the swordsman kills all the goblins in the floor in one swing. Messages come popping at him that the floor is clear and he has got XP point and the rank of the Cerulean Swordsman card has gone up. He collects the mana stones to replenish his mana. He also figures out that this card consumes much less mana than the others, which is a good news for him as the goblin. Mana stones are enough for him to recover his full mana. He then climbs to the fourth floor, and again he uses the Cerulean Swordsman card and clears the floor in a few minutes. The rank of the Cerulean Swordsman card again goes up, and this time Okita gets a new title. Sword Swing Introductory Catalog. He moves forward and also cleared the fifth floor easily, with the Swordsman help. This time as the card ranks get up, it gains two new skill IAI and Tasuki, and Okita also gets a title Sword Swing Peak Middle Record. Then he consecutively cleared the sixth and seventh floor with ease. In this time, he also collects mana stones to recover his mana, and the card rank also rises with the rise of the floors. He also gets new titles. Then in the eighth floor, Okita sees a new type of monster's Hobogoblin, which is a D-rank monster. The Hobogoblins were wearing armor, but in front of the swordsman it was like a paper as he cuts all the Hobogoblins with a single slash. Now Okita reaches the ninth floor, this is also the Dungan boss floor. The dungeon boss is a Goblin King, which is a C-rank monster. As the dungeon boss was going to activate its B-rank skill, Fainting Roar, the swordsman slashes its katana and separates the Goblin King's head from its body. The dungeon is finally cleared. Okita gets a new title, Piercing Blade, and the rank of the Cerulean Swordsman goes up. He also gets the Mana Stone of the Goblin King. Okita was amazed to see that this card ranks up as he kills monsters. He gets curious to see that how much this card rank can goes up. He then gets out of the building and see that Matsuda-san and Saki is waiting for him. By seeing Okita, Saki gets shocked and asked him that how he is out so soon. It is barely been an hour and he is already out of the dungeon. Matsuda-san gets sad as he thought that Okita has gave up and get out of the dungeon, as Saki was cheering up her grandfather. Okita speaks up and says that he has already cleared the dungeon. By hearing Okita's words, Matsuda-san and Saki gets shocked and rush to see the inside of the building. As Matsuda-san peeks inside his building, he sees that the building has turned to normal, which means the dungeon has be cleared. After seeing this, Matsuda-san and Saki starts to praise Okita and asked him how he defeated the dungeon boss. Okita gives a nice smile and says that it was coincidence that he was a good match for the dungeon boss. He also says that he is happy to serve them and tells them that they can pay him at any time. As Okita was about to take his leave, old man Matsuda asked him if he wants try to earn a little more. Okita gets a bit confused from his words. Matsuda-san then explains him that he has other buildings that has been dungeonized and he wants Okita to clear them. As Matsuda-san is taking Okita to the other dungeons, Saki tells her grandfather to wait and said him that they should first thanks Okita properly. By saying this, she expresses her gratitude towards Okita. Okita says that there is no need for this as it is also helping him to get mana stones. Okita gets excited that he can, again, clear a dungeon. As he was going to the next dungeon with Matsudas and his stomach starts to make noises so old man Matsuda asked him if he is hungry. He replied that he is. As Saki hears this, he grabs Okita's arm and pulls him with her to their home to give a treat to Okita. As Okita goes to Matsuda-san home, Saki cooks for them and prepares the dinner for him. As he eats the food, he founds it quite delicious and said thanks to Saki for preparing it. While all of them were eating, Okita asked Matsuda-san if only the two of them lives here. By hearing this question, Matsuda-san's face turns sad 
He said that Saki's parents, in otherwise his son and daughter-in-law, were assigned to go overseas, but Bekalese of the effects of the Tokyo airport being dungeonized, they couldn't come back to Japan, and that's why he and Saki lives together. Dungeonization of the Tokyo Airport The entrance into Japan's skies, the Tokyo Airport, was dungeonized. This had a tremendous effect on the traffic from overseas. Bekalese of that many people overseas couldn't return to Japan. Matsuda then asked Okita about his family. Okita says that he has a mother and a sister, but he hasn't met them for quite some time, as he lives alone. By hearing that Okita lives by himself, Matsuda-san offers Okita why he not sleep the night in his place. Okita respectfully declined his offer, and after finishing his dinner, he gets out of Matsuda-san's house. While he was walking alone in the midnight, he thinks about his family, so he calls his mother. He then sits on bench and tells his mom that he has quit the company as he will be working as a freelancer. After that, on the next day morning, we can see Okita has come in front of the third building of Matsuda. While he was staring the building Matsuda-san and Saki comes. As Okita sees Saki, he asked her why she is here while she should be in school. Saki said that he will be going to the school. Before she leaves for school, she hands Okita a lunchbox and says good luck to him. Okita then gets ready to clear the dungeon, and before going inside, he hands over his belongings to Matsuda-san and enters the dungeon. As he gets inside, he sees that all the monsters in the dungeon are mainly goblins, and the interior is also quite similar to the one he cleared yesterday. The world has still haven't figured out how dungeons appear. Previously, the government tried to predict dungeon appearances, but it didn't succeed. The only thing that's known is that the larger the original facility, the larger the dungeon that appears, from it, and that in large dungeons, even stronger monsters appear. Okada then draws his Cerulean Swordsman card, but he cannot kill all the goblins in one slash as the goblins are all around him. While he was thinking of a skill that will help his kill the goblins in one slash, at that time, a message pops up in his head which says that the Cerulean Swordsman has learned a new skill. Name Swift Rings of Silver. The Cerulean Swordsman then performs this technique and kills all the goblins as the technique slashes 360 degree. The confirmation message of all the monsters cleared in the floor appears and the Cerulean Swordsman gains one rank. Then with the Cerulean Swordsman card, Okita clears the second to fifth floor in just a few minutes. While clearing this many floors, the Cerulean Swordsman gains many ranks and new skill. Then, in the sixth floor, Okita gets to meet with a new kind of goblin, the spear. Goblin. The goblins has spears in their hands by seeing. Okita the spear goblins throw their spears towards him, but with the new skill of the swordsman he deflected all of it. After that, a message pops up that says that Okita has successfully intercepted long-ranged attacks. For this, he also gets XP points. The card rank also goes up, and a new skill is generated called the Linked Attacks. By seeing all of the spears are deflected easily, the goblins get scared. As the goblins were about to run, Okita orders the swordsman to kill all of them, and the swordsman unleashed his three-stage thrusts technique. As the technique is performed, blue-colored slashes come from the sword and hits all the goblins and killed them in an instant. The whole area gets covered with Samki from the effects of the attack. As the Psalm key becomes to clear, we can see all the goblins are killed successfully. Then the message of confirmation of the clear of the floor appears. Okita was amazed to see that this attack was so powerful that it even shaved of the parts to the dungeon. Mana Stones starts to appear from the death monsters. Okita gets exp and the rank of the skill all increases. Okita was so confused to see that, how a card can rank up so much. The gate cards only the Awakeners can use, using mana, the Awakeners can call forth the beings sealed inside and activate unique skills. Each card only has one of those sealed beings, and the type of skill is also fixed to one kind. Furthermore, because gate cards interfere with each other, 
it's impossible for a single Awakener to use more than one cards. Because of that, it's common knowledge that Awakeners can also only use one same skill. That's why Awakeners need to tame up with other card users who complement them. For example, if a user has fire type card and skill and the monster has a fire resistance, the attacks of that fire user will not affect the monster very much. In this time, a user with a different type of skill which is effective against the monster can swap up with the fire user and can easily defeat the monster. But is Okita's case, the power he obtained completely ignores this rules. The cards that Okita possess can also raise its rank, and each of the cards also has multiple skills. Originally cards like these should not exist at all. One card is lone enough to kill all the monsters in a dungeon. With this ability, Okita can easily clear any type of dungeon. But Okita was thinking that. What will happen if he encounter a dungeon that is far greater in level than his cards? While thinking this foul thoughts, he has reached the seventh floor of the dungeon. As he enters, he sees that a huge goblin is standing in front of him. This is the boss of this dungeon. The boss of this dungeon is also a goblin king but its rank is C+, plus, and it is also equipped with a spear and armor. Okita was watching the monster from a very far distance. He was thinking that it would be very reassuring to have a skill that will be able to kill that monster from this distance. He then remembers that there is a new skill that the Cerulean Swordsman has got, and he didn't try it yet. He then draws the card and told it to perform its new technique, Divine Speed Sword Draw. The swordsman then sheathe his katana and a huge blue slash appears and hits the goblin king. From the hit of it, the goblin king fly away and hit the dungeon wall and break it. It was died on the spot. Okita was amazed to see that, even from that distance, it can kill the boss monster and even shatters the dungeon. He was so happy that he have these amazing cards with such powerful skills. The dungeon clearance massage has come. Okita then takes up the mana stone that comes from the dungeon boss, and with it, he replenish his mana. Then a message appears which says, as the dungeon is cleared, so within 300 seconds, the building will become back to its original state. Uikta then gets out of the dungeon and goes to Matsuda-san and shows him the mana stone of the dungeon boss. Matsuda-san gets so shocked, and at the same time very happy. He gets so excited, tot, he starts to take Uikta, to next dungeon. He also didn't give Okita the chance to eat the bento that Saki has made for him. Later we can see Okita is in a dungeon. He draws his Cerulean Swordsman card and again orders it to perform a new skill name, Vortex of Emptiness, Vacuum Tornado. The Swordsman swirls his Kanata and makes a tornado around his Kanata. And after that, as he launched the attack, a golden color beam goes towards the goblins and kills all of them and destroys the whole place. In this last few days, Oikta have been clearing all the dungeonized buildings owned by Matsuda-san. While clearing them, he acquired many card skills and crushed many boss and cleared the dungeons. While clearing all the dungeon, he had built a relationship with Matsuda-san and Saki. He also had a great dinner in their house. Oikta didn't think that he would ever be able to spend his time this fulfilled after being treated like a disposable. After that, we can see he is fight with a dungeon boss, which is a mutated subspecies, Goblin King. This is the most powerful monster among all the monsters Oikta had encountered in all the Matsuda-san's dungeons. But the monster was not powerful enough to stand against Okita's Cerulean Swordsman. The Cerulean Swordsman attacks the monster and cuts it into pieces within a second. And with this, Oikta had finished clearing all the dungeons of Matsuda-san. He then gets out and meets with Matsuda-san. Matsuda-san praises him and said that he didn't only help him, rather he has helped a lot of people. The stores that were inside these buildings now can reopen, and some many people will be able to live here again. Wakta then says that there no need to praise him so highly as this is his job. After that, Oikta bids farewell to Matsuda-san and leaves. As Oikta leaves, Saki has rushed from her school to see Oikta, but she was a bit late as Okita has just left. She was a bit sad that she cannot see Oikta even though she ran so fast, but her grandfather cheers her up and said, 
that Oikta is an awakener, so he has lots to other works to do. Saki then understands her grandfather's words and hopes that they can meet with Oikta in the near future. Then we can see in the Clearwater headquarters, Miss Yuriko has just arrived in the office. She then goes to her table, and as she sits on her desk and turns on her laptop to see the information of all the dungeons cleared in this week, she sees that in this week no large dungeons has been cleared. Only two medium dungeons and eight small dungeons has been cleared. By seeing the eight small dungeons cleared, she found it a bit unusual as this eight dungeons has been neglected for a long time. She thought that a large corporation has dispatched a large team and cleared all of them. But she was doubting her thought as it is quite impossible to clear eight small dungeons in one week. So she decides to check the registered data as she sees this she gets a who shock as the eight small dungeons were cleared by Okita Hikaru who is AF Minus Awakener by seeing her so shocked. All of her colleges gathered around here and as they see the name Okita, who cleared eight small dungeons, some of them said that this is not the Okita that quite their company, and some of them starts to say that. What's the fuss about clearing eight small dungeons in this small, dungeons only goblins appears, which are low-ranked monsters. As Yuriko was hearing all of this, she gets frustrated and gets up from her seat and walks to a quiet place. As she was walking, she was thinking that clearing eight small dungeons in a couple of days is a very difficult job. But she was thinking, how Okita has archived this great feat while he was in the company. He only has the gate card to recovery. She thinks that Okita might have been invited into a strong team. But she rethinks this and gets that. This might not be the case as if the eight small dungeons has been cleared by a team. Then why only Okita's name is registered is the registered data. She then thinks that Okita might have got a strong gate card when he cleared the dungeon with Tyrasan's team. She then gets worried about Okita, as a too strong card can be very dangerous. We can see Okita is sitting in a cafe at that time. His phone rings as he got a message. As he sees the message, he sees that Yuriko has messaged him and she has invited Okita to see her tomorrow. By reading this, Okita gets a shocked, and he starts to blush. After that, in the evening, we can see Miho and Nakamura is walking in the market street. While they were walking and talking to each other, Miho noticed Okita and starts to walk closer to him. Nakamura tells to stop her, but she ran away. As Miho goes near Okita, she sees that Yuriko and Okita is talking to each other as she sees that she and Nakamura hides behind some banners and starts to spy on them. Later on, Okita and Yuriko gets inside a cafe and orders coffee for them. Yuriko says sorry to Okita for this sudden meetup. She says that she was very curious about Okita, that she had no other choice. Okita get, a, get confused from the word of Yuriko. Yuriko then asked, Okita, if he had gotten a very powerful gate card in the dungeon that he cleared with Tyrasan's team before his quitting. Okita gets a big shocked. Yuriko then changes the topic and shows the registered data to Okita and asked him if this is him who cleared all these eight small dungeons. Okita replied with a yes and said that he was the one who cleared all those dungeons. By hearing Okita's reply, Yuriko gets surprised and asked him how did he cleared all those dungeons. Okita says that... He was lucky that the dungeons were only filled with weak monsters. As he answers Yuriko's questions, he also gets curious that why Yuriko is asking all these questions. He then peeks at Yuriko's status window with his powers and see that Yuriko is worried about Okita and she thinks Okita as her little brother. By seeing this, Okita feels relief and he puts a nice smile on his face and said to Yuriko, It is true that he is a low-ranked, unreliable awakener, but he is not her little brother, so there is no need to worry so much. By hearing this, she gets a bit shocked and says that it is right that he is not her little brother, but she has a reason why she is worried about him. She then requests Oikta to hear her stroy. Yuriko starts to tell Oikta the story of her little brother who passed away inside a dungeon at the time when her little brother was a college student and had established an awakener team for young students with abilities. 
Many outstanding students gathered in the team and cleared dungeons one after another. Furthermore, her brother successfully obtained one of the few confirmed SRANK cards in Japan. So many companies paid attention to him, and that was when an accident occurred. The SRANK card went berserk and the dungeon collapsed. Burying Yuriko-san's little brother and many others, though being an awakener, is indeed a dangerous job. As long as, as one know their own limits, they can avoid the danger. However, if one hold a rare card that vastly outstrips their own abilities one day, they won't be able to control it. After the stroy, she says that when she thought that Okita might have obtained a rare card, she couldn't help but think of her little brother. After hearing all her words, Oikta gets that she is truly worried about him. He then says, Sorry to Yuriko for worrying her. He also says that he has been really lucky that the dungeons he had cleared are all easy ones, and also tells her that if he had gotten any powerful card, he wouldn't quit the company. Oikta then shows her a F-rank magic missile gate card and tells that this is his card that he bought with his severance pay. Yuriko takes the card and with her spectacles of insight judgment, Lens checks the status of THE cards and see that the card is original, as according to Oikta's words. Yuriko then returns the card to Okita and again apologize to him for worrying too much. Oikta says that it's not a problem and it also makes him happy that someone worries about him. After that, they get out of the cafe as they steps outside. Nakamura comes and says hello to them. Miho also shows herself, and comes and greets Oikta. Oikta also say hello to both of them. Nakamura then asked, Oikta why he is not surprised to see them. Oikta didn't say anything, but the real reason he was not surprised by seeing them is that he has already noticed them with his powers. Nakamura then questioned them if they are on a date. Yuriko replied that, it's not something like that. After hearing this, Miho offers Okita to have a meal with everyone after this. As Nakamura hears this, he tells Miho that she should not disturb them. In the meantime, Oikta peeks at Nakamura's status and sees that he is interested in Miho. Oikta then stops both of them and said that if they both get along with someone like him who quit the company, their evaluation will go down. He then said that as he has finished his business with Yuriko, he will be leaving now, and after says bye to all of them, he leaves. As he was going to his home, he was thinking that, as he cleared so many dungeon, he got in the eyes of the companies. So, he decides to be more cautious, as getting involved with any company will be a problem for him. On the other hand, we can see Noguchi MD, the lady is talking to Tyra about Oikta, but Tyra refused to say anything about Oikta, and leaves them, as Tyra leaves them behind, Noguchi and the lady sees the news of Oikta, clearing many small dungeons, and as they sees this, they gets pissed of from Oikta's success. As Tyra refused them to do something about the matters of Oikta, so they decided to goes to the director Serizawa. According to their plan, they goes to director Serizawa's room. They goes to him, and that they have a complaint about Okita the boy who recently quit the company. Noguchi says that Okita has been getting in their way of clearing the dungeons and he has been abusing their company name to get into the dungeons. By hearing this, Serizawa asked Noguchi what he is trying to do so in this matter. Noguchi replied that he wants to put some pressure on Okita so that he won't get ahead of himself anymore. Serizawa gets up from his seat and said, that it is right. And he also said to Noguchi, that as he is using their company's name in this matter, he should be sure to completely crush Okita. Noguchi replied, that he will do is smoothly. On Okita's side, we can see he is going to the jurisdiction of the Awakener Supervisory Board, Dungeon Public Corporation. This is one of the dungeon corporations the government manages. Once a dungeon is discovered, it gets registered here and freelancer. Awakeners can get permission to delve into it. The owner of the building can also directly employ Awakeners, just like Matsuda-san did with Okita. But it's far more common to go through the Dungeon Corporation. Wikta goes inside the building, and as he log in his profile to check for any dungeon available, he sees that there is not a single dungeon that he can delve into. 
After seeing this, he peeks the profile of the person sitting next to him and sees that this person has 16 dungeons that he can delve into. He then again checks others' profile and sees that they all have dungeons that they can go in. Oikta then goes to the General Information Center and asks the man sitting there if there is problem with his profile as it is not showing and dungeons that he can delve into. The man then search for Okita's profile in his computer, and after seeing Okita's profile, the man straightforwardly said that the clear water company that he quieted recently is making problems in his dungeon delving. The man then asked Okita if he had quit the company with some sort of grudges and said that it is common for major companies to bow things like this. Wikta then asked the man that will be not be able to delve any dungeon form now on. The man said, that there is a dungeon showing in his profile that he can delve. By hearing this, Okita quickly tells the man to let him join the dungeon. The man replied that he will be in a contested case with clear water for this dungeon. Contested case means multiple teams will be competing for a single dungeon. This requires the dungeon owner to offer more rewards than usual. It's a method often adopted for large dungeon conduring to increase the probability of clearing a difficult dungeon. However, in this case, it's obvious that their objective is to crush Oikta. Oikta then thinks a bit about whose work it would be. In his head, he was thinking of Noguchi and the lady. But whatever the case is, Okita decides to delve the dungeon. The dungeon is C-ranked. As Okita enter the dungeon, he meet up with Noguchi and Hirayama. As the both of them see Okita, they starts to mock him about his glasses. But Okita didn't do anything and talked to them nicely. Noguchi then said, Okita that how stupid he is to take a contested case against clear water. He also tells Okita to go to the other route to the dungeon. Okita then leaves them and finds another route. As he was about to enter the route, he senses some monsters' presence. He saw two MAF Ox, which are D-rank monsters coming towards him, he then draws his cerulean swordsman card and skills the two mad ox in one slash. As he kills them, he saw that a hound of mad ox has come and charges towards him. But it was not a challenge for him, as with the help of the swordsman, he kills all of the monsters easily and make his way to the 11th floor of the dungeon, where the dungeon boss is. The dungeon boss is Centaurus, which is a B-rank monster. Okita looks for any other members, but as he... Didn't find anyone, he draws his cerulean swordsman and kills the boss in a slash. On the other hand, in the third floor of the dungeon, Noguchi and his team is facing difficulty in defeating the D-rank Mad Oxes. After they cleared the third floor, monsters they were taking rest and drinking water as they were talking to each other. They see that the building is turning to normal. By seeing this, they get a huge shock that the dungeon is already cleared. As the building completely turns normal, Okita gets in the lift and press the first floor button. While getting down to the first floor, he was thinking that clearing this dungeon takes more time than he expected. As the lift reaches the first floor and as its door opens, Okita meets with Noguchi and his party members. By seeing them, Okita wants to slip past them by. Noguchi noticed him and tells him to stop. Okita, then puts an innocent smile in his face and asked, Noguchi, why are they still on this floor? Okita also tells them that as they were so slow, so he went ahead and defeated the dungeon boss for their sake. By hearing Okita cleared the dungeon, Noguchi and the other gets shocked that how can he alone cleared the dungeon in a so short time frame. By making everyone shocked, Okita leaves the dungeon. As Okita leaves, Noguchi and Hirayama couldn't believe in his achievement. Hirayama guessed that as Okita is well known about the structure of the buildings, so he might have found a shortcut route and used it to get to the dungeon boss so quickly. After that, Noguchi tells Hirayama that they should quickly go to the company and again pull some strings so that Okita again enters a dungeon with them. As Okita leaves, he goes to the general information guy and tells him that he cleared the dungeon. As the guy hears this, he gets shocked and starts to thoroughly check out the mana stone. Okita then asked him if there is another dungeon that he can enter. 
The guy said, that. There is another dungeon that he can enter, but it is also a contested case. Dungeon with the clear water. By hearing this, Okita gets excited and tells him to quickly enroll him. Okita then goes to the dungeon, and he effortlessly gets to the dungeon boss floor. This dungeon boss is a B-rank boarhead monster. Okita summons his Cerulean Swordsman, and as the Swordsman appears, he unleashed his Divine Speed Sword Draw technique and kills the boss with it. As the building turns normal, Okita then comes to the first floor, and again, he sees Noguchi and Hirayama. They also get shocked that how can a mere F-rank Awakener can clear the dungeon faster than him. Then, on to the next dungeon, it is a D-rank dungeon, and again, like the others, Okita cleared the dungeon effortlessly with his Cerulean Swordsman gate card, and again, after the dungeon turns normal, and as he gets to the first floor, he meets with Noguchi and Hirayama again, shocks them. As Noguchi and Hirayama gets to the headquarters of the clear water, Noguchi gets so angry that he start to kick the dustbin. Hirayama tells that it would be very bad for them, as they are still unable to crush Okita even after using director Serizawa's name. Noguchi then tells to Hirayama that they have no choice but to set up traps for Okita. While Noguchi and Hirayama was discussing about this, Nakamura was behind them and he clearly hears everything. He gets worried about Okita and goes to a corner and calls Okita and tells him that Noguchi and Hirayama are planning to crush him. He also said they, he heard that they will be directly crush him in the dungeon. Okita then thanks Nakamura for this info. In the meantime, Hirayama comes to the corner and sees that Nakamura is talking to someone. Then, as she gets close to him, she hears him talking to Okita, Hirayama. Then things that all of this time, Nakamura has been informing Okita about their plans. She then decided to change their plan and decides to use Nakamura to lure Okita into their trap. As Nakamura finished talking to, Okita gets out of the corner, he sees Hirayama standing out. Hirayama then asked Nakamura that she has a favor to ask of him. Then we can see Okita and entered a C-rank dungeon. As he enters, he again meets up with Noguchi and Hirayama, and this time, Nakamura was also there with them. By seeing Nakamura, Okita gets shocked and asked him why he is here with Noguchi and Hirayama. Nakamura said that after he finished talking with him, they invited him to their team and said that they want to clear the dungeon before Okita does it with a fluke. Nakamura also said that he joined them so that he can accomplish something and show it to Miho to impress her. Okita then warns him that to not let his guard down as they might do something at any time. As they were talking, Noguchi calls Nakamura as they will be going now. Nakamura then goes with them. As he left, Okita feels that, as Nakamura is so hyped up to clear the dungeon, so he should let the clear water clear the dungeon today. But his gut feeling is indicating of a dangerous situation, 